Hey everybody, it's Chris Sims from ComicsAlliance.com here on the floor of Comic-Con International 2014 in sunny San Diego, California, where the weather is nice, but we are in a building. And I am here with Kyle Higgins and Alex Eagle, who are the creators of Cowl from Image Comics, which is uh, the high concept, as I understand it, is that it is a superhero comic about superhero labor unions in Chicago. Uh, so I guess the obvious question about that is... Uh, with the, with the history of comics and labor unions, I hate to ask where you got that idea, but how did the, the idea of kind of unionizing superheroes come about? Uh, well, this is a long kind of storied project for us in that um, it started when we were in college and I was working on it as a short story in order to get into a, a film school in Southern California, Chapman University. And so uh, I wrote it as this kind of comedy piece where the initial kind of concept came from. It was, honestly, it was just something that made me laugh. Um, the idea of organized heroes who, you know, during a battle, if it's after 5 p.m., like, they clock out. Like, it doesn't matter if they're in a foot chase or not. And so that's kind of what I wrote. And then uh, as Alec and I started talking about it more and more, we've known each other for since high school. Um, I, I needed something for my senior thesis film, and I wanted to do something very big and, uh, and different. And I wanted to do it related to uh, the types of movies that had got me into filmmaking, which was Burton's Batman, Richard Donner's Superman. I mean, in later years, when Brian Singer did X-Men. And, and anyway, so I wanted to do something superhero related, and I started thinking about The League, which was the name of the film, or the, the, what the film became, uh, in a more serious light. And we started, we stumbled across this idea of um, the early 60s, uh, the prominence of unions, especially in Chicago, where we're from, the city's politics, um, the way that that all kind of meshes with the rise of Marvel Comics at that time and the flawed heroes and the transition kind of from a golden age to silver age, and um, which was a few years earlier, obviously, but it's still that in that era. And it just kind of all started to gel and gave a lot more um, kind of uh, thematic and emotional resonance to the concepts, and that's where we started world building. Um, the other big thing about it is that... Uh, it's it's not really a superhero book, you know. It's it's much more um, it's it's much more of a character drama, and and these guys have have costumes once in a while, um, but it's it's I guess it's been described as Mad Men with capes, and I think that's pretty apt. Or The Wire, um, so yeah. I mean, I just it's kind of a, a melting pot of all the things that that we love. So now that I've talked way too much, uh, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think for, for me, it was just kind of like a really big, like a what if, you know? I mean, it's like to approach it in a grounded way where it's like superheroes in the real world, like what would that really be like? And like you said, like being in the 60s just seemed like the perfect decade when all there's all that change already and you have heroes that like, are they relevant anymore? And there's just, you know, the change from the, the Eisenhower 50s into the uncertainty of the the 60s just kind of seemed like the perfect place to put it. So. Well, yeah, and, and those post-war years when everything really is black and white and then this transition 10 years later to the shades of gray and, and yeah. the Cold War and, and paranoia and yeah. looking through that, looking at all of that through the lens of, of superheroes is, is, is interesting to us and, and setting in the past is, I don't know, I think it's much more, uh, it's much easier to buy into a world like this and, and the fantastic when you set it in an era that isn't our own currently, you know? Yeah. Now, from a design standpoint, uh, I'm kind of intrigued by the idea of doing a period piece and originally thinking of it as a film and then going into comics where there's, you know, you have no limitations on costumes or, or budget. Did that, was that kind of freeing for you in terms of what you wanted to do or did you want to did that help you kind of keep it grounded in a real world situation because you had to think about things in terms of what your budget would have been? Uh, well, I think, I mean, you, you look at that opening fight in the very first issue, I mean, that's obviously something that we never would have been able to do in the short film. Uh, so that was that was a way to, like, go real big. Uh, but I think the rest of the time, we kind of, again, we kind of approached it from that real world fashion where, like, what would this be like? And, you know, it's because a character has super speed or can fly, if they fly into a building, they're dead like it's not you know kind of the all-encompassing power where they can get thrown through a concrete wall and uh, so it's just kind of approaching it from like what was what are the 60s like and where can we kind of 
stretched a little bit, where they've got like those design, like the James Bond esque kind of uh, communicator watches, and obviously the Skylancer, the, the villain in the first issue, has a jetpack. So we try to ground what needs to be grounded, and then find areas where we can kind of push into like the fantastical. Yeah, I, I think we stay pretty tonally consistent, um, and so even that opening big Skylancer fight um, is tonally consistent with what the short film is if we just would have had a bit more money, you know? Um, the other thing, too, is that aesthetically, as far as, like, costumes and the looks of characters go, um, our taste gravitates towards real clothing. Um, even when I was doing Nightwing, like, that was always a constant conversation was, well, how does the suit actually work? And, and you know, Eddie Barrows initially was drawing it more in, like, a spandex model, and then we slowly started kind of... Sh pushing it away from that to more of a, a seamed kind of, um, you know, uh, tactical piece of clothing. Um, and that's the stuff that interests me. Um, it, so it really fits with something like Cowl, where even though we're, it started as a film, but now it's in comics, the aesthetic of the comic is very reminiscent of the live action just because that's, that's kind of what we know. Now you mentioned uh, Mad Men a little earlier uh, being something that you're often compared to. Uh, and you also mentioned the rise of Marvel Comics in the 60s, which is, you know, obviously something I've thought a lot about and, and written a lot about at ComicsAlliance.com. Uh, did you, was there a balance that you had to, to strike in looking back at uh, contemporary portrayals of the 60s and then going back to the source material as far as influence went? Yeah, a little bit. Um, actually, you know, Darwin's New Frontier is a really great, um, example of this as well, where it's it's in the it's in the style and the feel of, in some ways, um, those those late '50s Silver Age DC stories, but in a contemporary, it still has a contemporary style to it. Like it's a really great combination. So that's aesthetically kind of our, in some ways, was our starting point for the comic, and then we just, you know, we pushed a little bit further, um, but there's an issue coming out that hasn't been solicited yet that is uh, the origin of the Grey Raven but it's as a 1962 comic book so we actually we have an artist that uh, um, well I'll just say uh, this is exclusive exclusive but, uh, but I, I love you guys so um, we're doing uh, issue issue six of Cowl is with uh, Joe Bennett who is one of my very good friends uh, we did Deathstroke together at DC uh, little known fact, Joe does an amazing Jack Kirby. So the cover for issue six is, is already done. It's this fantastic Grey Raven 1962 Chicago superhero comic cover, and the whole book is going to be written and drawn as an early 60s book, and it will exist in the world of Cowell, as if Cowell and Jeffrey Warner licensed out their characters to a Stan and Jack type you know, writer-artist team. Uh, of that time, so. which was the the premise of a lot of those Stanley and Jack Kirby comics, yes. that they were that they would show up in the comics and talk about, we gotta talk about what the Fantastic Four did this month. Yes, and so like we're gonna even do, um, we're designing um, different ads to exist in the comic for you know within the world of Cowell and and Chicago of the early '60s, and it, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So it's a cool way to kind of um, to to tap into the stuff that. In, you know, influences Cowell in a uh, without without just you know we don't want to write a '60s comic like that's not what we ever wanted to do. Like even when we were early on in the book, it was like, well, should we add texture to the pages so that it feels like an old comic? It's like no, that's we don't want this to be a book that we want it to be a book about the early '60s. We don't want it to be a book from the early '60s. But in this case, we kind of get to have our cake and eat it too with this one shot so and it's canon until it's not you know <laughs> so uh cowl you said that's issue six uh how many issues are out now uh two are out two are out, three is out uh, next week, end of the month. all right and uh and it sounds like this is gonna be planned as an ongoing yeah. Yeah. do you have like a uh, a a schedule for like how much you can fit into the 60s how much you can fit into the rise of this organization uh, or do you have a planned ending in mind, or is, or is Cowl something that could potentially go on set in the 60s forever? It could go on for quite a while. Um, w the story, I mean, you'll see in issue three that's out, like I said, next week. Uh, the story is just kind of starting, um, and it's, it's heading in directions that 
I don't I don't know that anyone anyone really see like it's not the book is 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 what it is right now but what it's going to become is uh, is, is even more exciting so um, we do have an ending uh, we don't want to get to it for quite a while uh, because the world is is very complex the characters are um, are you know we've done a lot of work on them and there are a lot of there's a lot of backstory and a lot of relationships that um, that you know we want to explore and, and uh, if it takes us into different decades uh, great but at the same time I don't want to you know I don't want it to be a gimmick book of okay well what are superheroes in the 70s and what are they now in the 80s and, and anything like that so I guess the the, the long answer is uh, we'll see <laughs> ongoing series yeah. is the long answer that's, that's the best part of an ongoing all right, folks, we have been talking to Kyle Higgins and Alex Siegel about Cowl. It's out now from Image Comics. Check it out.